I'm Tinsy Tarantula, and these are my spiders. And just remember everybody, we all fail, we all make mistakes, that's what makes us human. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, and it's that time of month again, or week, tarantula maintenance, if you're new to the channel, and you don't know what tarantula maintenance is, basically tarantula maintenance is, obviously I feed the tarantulas, and then um, I leave it um, a couple of days to a week, and then I go around filling up any water dishes, and checking for any uneaten or food bulbuses. So that's pretty much tarantula maintenance. Um, it's a regular thing here on the channel. So if that's your kind of thing, then feel free to check out the other tarantula maintenance videos. Enjoy this one. And we'll look at some tarantulas, um, see if there's any uneaten food and the usual filling up the water dishes. So this is unsexed Tajaris darlingi. And just having a look, there is no food, bulbous, but the water dish could be top top, which is there. I, I use I use these GU pops as water dishes. So if you ever had a GU if you ever know what a GU is, um they're quality desserts and they come in these gla glass pots. So what I do is I have the dessert, wash the glass pots up, and I use these glass pots for water because I found the water actually stays in the glass pots longer rather than your um, plastic tubs or bottle caps or whatever or basically all the big tarantulas get these glass dishes and obviously all the slings and the little juveniles get milk bottle tops so this one just needs a bit of water, that's it can't see any sign of food bulbous. I normally find I normally find with a lot of my old world spiders, i.e. my baboons and stuff, that I don't really get any food bulbuses because they literally munch all the food up. So just double check just to make sure there's no food bulbuses again. Nope. Water. Water, I use standard tap water that I leave for a day or two. I don't use your Bottled water, i.e. your spring water. And just a tip, everybody. I know I keep saying this in my videos. Do not use fizzy water. Fizzy water is not good for your spiders. It will potentially kill them. Because <laughs> it's carbonated, full of gases. So yeah, this one. I haven't seen this one for ages. This is obviously not fully grown yet. Hence why it's got a milk bottle top and this is for mictopus acrochromatus the red island so this one is just a bottle top no food bulbous like i said i've not seen this one for yonks so it's just a case of milk bottle top fill up put back in um check for any food bulbuses have a good look around no no dead worms no food bulbuses so we move on to the next one. This is our female M, M. Balfouri, which had dead dead worm in the water dish. Yeah, this is our um, female M. Balfouri, the girl that had a real bad molt. She is getting rehoused soon out of this into a Komodo. I've got a spare Komodo in the corner set up, so the next video will be a rehousing of her um she's the girl that had a bad malt that walks a bit funny she's still alive bless her so we're going to give her a new enclosure and hopefully she'll live a life in that and hopefully she malts again some point soon and her legs end up being corrected and she walks better but she's still alive as you can see she's in the corner she's still hanging in there 
but obviously he did have a bad moat and obviously these obviously you can see the crooked legs you can see a crooked leg there and a crooked leg there um and a crooked leg there so she can't walk fully yet but even though she's a baboon and she's had a bad moat he still gives me attitude and hopefully when she molts again um her legs will get corrected and stuff but that's what can happen in the hobby like you can see she's, she's trying to walk look bless her and she can't fully use all her legs but that's what happens in the hobby um a chance you can have a bad molt and lose a limb in a molt die in a molt or end up with bad legs like that but they do correct themselves they can grow their limbs back uh, a molt can fix a new molt can fix obviously a bad molt but she must really molt again and hopefully end up walking around and looking good but she's still alive which is pretty good this one is your pea marinus aka ginger ninja orange bitey thing it didn't eat the cricket look bit of dead cricket so we'll put that in there like so just fill the water dish up <clears throat> and check for any of it uneaten food nope i'm not gonna pull that malt out i've left that malt in there for young because it's so covered up in web but she's webbed up and she's another one that's going to get rehoused in the future obviously if you watched all my videos you'll know that i want to get rid of all these plastic enclosures and obviously rehouse every tarantula into these glass komodo enclosures that i've got half of my tarantulas in obviously i need to get two different sizes um obviously i need to get the 30 by 30 by 30 ones for my bigger um tarantulas i my campus gary gina colata my vaggins my nandu chromatis then all the other enclosures i use the 30 by 30 by 30s which are the next size down for all my old worlds and some of the smaller terrestrial species so that's the plans going forward in the future that's the obt ginger ninja full water dish you won't really find any food bulbuses in this enclosure because this is the lassiodora kluge and lassiodoras are known to gorge on food so just pop up the water dish and that'll be it as you can see by the butt this one's pretty much going into pre-malt so there'll be no feed in this one for a while and obviously we'll see what color it turns out to be this is the first time i've owned a kluge um it's unsexed so next malt we should be able to see um hopefully some of its colors coming through and potentially if we can sex it or not Simple, it's water dish filled, and we move on to the next spider, which is a spider I don't see very much. This one is our Fort Hall baboon, um, Petrunus lagardi, pet hole, no food bulbuses. Let's lift the water dish up and have a look, see if there's any food bulbuses under the water. Because sometimes I've noticed that the worms... Oh, we've got dead cricket there, so it's not eaten. So we'll take that out. Yeah, sometimes I've noticed when I've been watering them, that the old worms end up under the water dish. But, simple. Fill the water dish up all good we'll find we'll, we'll definitely see this at some point in the future <laughs> when i rehouse it but pretty much a pet hole like most of your old world baboons another spider that's in pre-malt so we won't find any food bulbuses because i've not fed this one for a while so it's just a case of topping up the water dish but this is your bracky palma 
Aquamore. Used to be known as Bracky Palmer Smithy Mexican Red Knee. You can see by the butt, it's in pre malt, it's a slow grower, it's fat. So this is just a water dish top up, and that's about it. Prefer a more of a drier environment um, coming from places in Mexico, aka hence the name Mexican Red Knee. This is the only true spider in the collection, uh, Linafel Phallax, dead bit of food bulbous as you can see, I'm trying to find out where the spider is, I don't want it charging out, because they're quick. <clears throat> so where is it, it's down there so I've got to be careful here. Just fill up the water dish. <laughs> if anyone else struggles to fill up the water dish, because there's so much webbing. I hope it don't come charging out. I don't really want it charging out at me. I don't want to chase one of them around because they're fast, very fast. But there you go, and I saw you'll see that spider. Unsexed. Linafel Phallax, the only true spider in the collection. No food bulbous, it's just a top up of water. This is one of two scorpions. This is Wednesday. Ah. Uh, Asian forest. <laughs> there she is, look. She's quality, she is. Just chilling out there. No food bulbous, looking fat. Definitely needs to molt at some point. Looking all good though, and there she goes, she'll disappear now. Wednesday, our Asian Forest Scorpion. Again, just a top up of water. This is a rarer species. This is our Orphanaceous SP Blue Quazon, or the Quazon Blue. So, just a water dish, fat little bugger. So, just fill up the water dish, and that will be it. Cool spider though. A rarer, orphanaceous species, blue quazon. Even though it don't look blue, I <laughs> don't know why they've called it a blue quazon. Like I said, it don't really look blue. More of a brownish colour, in my opinion. So this one is pretty all right. No food bulbuses and a full water dish. This is Haplocosmia Himalayana. The Himalayan and Earth Tiger, which I've not seen since I rehoused it. Um, I had some good views on the rehousing of this and some good comments. And she's not been seen since we did that rehousing video. But it's no food bulbuses, full water dish, so she's definitely eating. No food bulbus, but we've got a malt. As you can see, a malt. And a water dish needs filling up. And this is Kilobrachis Frimbritus, aka Indian Violet, which I've not seen for yonks. Oh, just a bit of food bulbous there. So it just needs a water dish. And that is it. I haven't seen this spider for absolutely yonks, to be fair. But I know it's unsexed. And obviously I know it's alive because there's no sign of any food bulbuses whatsoever. And malts. I'm hoping it turns out to be a female because that would be pretty cool. But that is Kilobrachis Frimbritus, aka Indian Violet. Pretty much the same again with this old world species. Just top up the water dish. No sign of foo bulbuses, and this is one of two blue spiders. And this is a Asian old world Cirrapatropus libidus, aka cobalt blue, formerly known as the Haplopalma lividum. A stunning blue old world Asian spider. Bit of an attitude. But they are stunning and obviously she lives down somewhere down there in a burrow 
Once they establish a burrow, you very rarely see the lividus. No food bulbuses from this girl, and that's what we expect. Killer Brackies, Kern Kraken, aka Big Black. She normally comes charging. But she ain't charging today. <laughs> but there you go. Big Black, uh, Killer Brackies, Kern Kraken. Look at the size of her. That is a humongous old world spider. Just chilling out, look, on top of her web. She's dug deep down as well, as you can see. Decent webber, and obviously she is in the biggest um, glass Komodo you can get. 30 by 30 by 31. So all my big spiders will go in these 30 by 30 by 31s. And all my um, old world, smaller old worlds and terrestrials will end up in the Komodo 30 by 30 by 30. So you can see the size difference. These are more square, and obviously these are bigger squared enclosures with vented lockable lids, as you can see. And the good thing about these enclosures, even though they cost a bit of money, they stack, so you can get a good stack of them going. As you can see, I've got literally four stacked up there, and not one of them is typical look. And they're hard to move as well. See, I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it really hard and they're hard to move. So that's what makes these great enclosures. Even though they cost a bit more money, they can stack. You get various sizes. You obviously get these sizes. Um, this size. And that size. And you also get... The arboreal size as well. No food bulbuses in here and a full water dish, a very cool spider just down there. Female Davalorus pentalorus, aka Colombian Tiger Rump. Used to be known as the Cyclosternum fasciatum. Costa Rican tiger rump, but it got reclassified to the Davalorus pentalorus. Costa Rican tiger, Colombian tiger rump, Colombian tiger rump, should I say. Gentle giant T. Tocal Vaggins. There's no food bulbuses in here because she's on a diet. Due to her uh, looking like she's gonna explode, as you can see, humongous abdomen. So she is on a diet literally until she molts. Just fill up the water dish, and like I said, there would be no food bulbous because obviously she's on a diet until she molts. A little fatty. A tarantula, a bit like your Gina Colata and your Lassiodora will eat and eat and eat and eat until they explode. Have a quick look down there we won't see this one um but there's no food bulbuses and it's a full water dish down there and that's our unsexed histocratius gigas cameroon baboon yep obviously like i said just having a look from here and if i take the lid off but having a look from here there's a full water dish and there's no food bulbus and it's a spider we've not seen since we put it in the enclosure. Same again with this spider. No food bulbous. There's a malt in there which I'm not going to get until I rehouse this one. This is um, Krona Palmer Sianki Besants. Green bottle blue. So literally just top up the water dish. And to be fair, um, this is a terrestrial species that I don't really see food bulbuses from in much as <coughs> much as a whole lot. Heavy Weber and I can't wait to get her rehoused into a Komodo at some point in the future. And see just how she webs that up. But a colourful tarantula. The only tarantula that's green, orange and blue. Hence the name green bottle blue. 
one of my more skittish terrestrial species, female Nandu chromatus. No food bulbous, just off of the water dish. This one I can't wait to get into a 30 by 30 by 30 and she can live the rest of our life out there because she is very, very skittish. One, of, Like I said, one of my most skittish tarantulas, this girl. Her and my Lassiodora, should I say. As you can see, a big spider. Um, she's not fully grown yet. One of my favourites. She's got no food bulbuses. She's got a water dish that's completely empty, so she definitely is filling up. And that is Tank, our uh, Accountoscaria Gina Clata. Obviously, I've explained um, <laughs> the story many a times of why this one's called Tank. As you can see, a <laughs> stunning spider. Decent leg size, we've just got to get her fattened up a bit now. But apart from that, stunning. And she's pretty much nearly fully grown. Another one that's going to get a 30 by 30 by 30 enclosure. But a stunning spider. Looks like a zebra. Red abdomen. Black carapace. And zebra striped legs. Stunning terrestrial. If you're after a nice looking terrestrial species. That's pretty cheap and ready available. Then look at getting the Acampuscaria Gina Colata, Brazilian white knee or Brazilian black and white. Stunning spider, as you can see. And she's pretty chill, to be fair. This is another girl that's on a diet, so there's no food bulbuses. But as you can see, <laughs> she's in the water dish. Aphona palma simani, Costa Rican tiger rump. So, she's going to get wet. But she's sat in the water dish, so she's obviously want some water. There we go. <laughs> and there we go, see. She got a bit wet, but... <laughs> there she is. She got a bit wet, but look at She's doing fine. <laughs> Aphona palma simani. Costa Rican Zebra. <clears throat> so, here's our newest edition of Fauna Palma Annex. Water dish is full. No food bulbuses. She's obviously the recent addition in the um, Tarantula collection. If you've not seen the unboxing, there's an unboxing video um, on the channel. And obviously a care video for her. i um, glad I decided to purchase this girl. First time I've kept Anaphona Palma Annex and so far she's been pretty chilled. Lovely coloration as well as you can see. Definitely worth picking up. And I'm glad I decided to purchase... This girl, um, I've had her a couple of weeks. Well, I've not had her a month yet, but she's pretty much settled in, eating fine, chilling out, drinking water. <laughs> so it's all good. Highly recommend looking at a, a phone of Palma Annex to add to your collection. I'm so girl, so glad I actually picked this girl up. The only Pocleferia I have in the collection, Pocleferia regalis. Indian or ghost ornamental, just needs to top up the water dish. Like so. And that is it, no food bulbous. She is a humongous poker fairy, as you can see. The only pokey in the collection, um, readily available. And obviously, stunning coloration with the blacks and the whites and obviously cool abdomen pattern and there she goes she's going for wonder look <laughs> and she is pretty much fully grown now she will not get any bigger than this so she's pretty much fully grown but a stunning pocleferia species like i said i did buy it as a female and i've not seen any 
tibia hooks or bulbous pedipulps. So I'm guessing it's a female. But we can also check the molts because obviously I have in the past had tarantulas that I've bought um, that I've bought as females and have turned out to be males. So we've had a few molts from this one and there is no sign of bulbous pedipulps and stuff. So it looks like we have a female, but we'll keep an eye on it. But like I said, there's no tibia hooks. Not really no bulbous pedipulps, but we'll keep an eye on it. And obviously touch wood. It is what I asked for, and it's a female, but a stunning spider, if you like Pocopharia species. Obviously, Pocopharia species are not for beginners. They're fast. Arboreal spiders with potent venom. Yes, I have been bit by a Pocopharia in the past, and it wasn't... It was not a pretty experience. I had a headache. I felt sick. <clears throat> it felt like my arms and legs were locking up. They were numb. It was horrible. It lasted well over a week. So I can safely say that I've experienced a Pocleferia bite. And they are not very nice. Definitely not a handable tarantula if you like handling your tarantulas i advise not to handle pocleferia species or old world species because you're asking for trouble if you want to handle terrestrial that's fine but arboreal and old world i highly recommend you just leave alone and don't even consider handling Especially a Pocleferia, but I definitely want to get more Pocleferia species in the future. But I just don't know which one I want next, whether I want um, Rufalata, um, Safusca, Metallica. There's still quite a few Pokies out there. Um, only Pokey I've got, but she's stunning. No three bulbuses. <laughs> and this girl is actually out. She's on the glass door, as you can see. This is the only Avicularia I own. This is the Avicularia Aversicant colour. Antilles Pink Toe. No food bulbous. Just top up the water. <laughs> and obviously, there is, as you can see, all the white stuff that's on the substrate. And on the side of the glass, there is poo. <laughs> But she's stunning. We'll try and turn the tank around to get a good video of her. Obviously, it's, we've not really seen her out for a while. So we'll try and get a good video of her. Look. Before she decides to disappear. Can I put the torch on? Can I put the light on? Can I put the light on? No, I can't find the settings for the light. <coughs> but there she is, look. We're going to put the... She's coming for a walk, so we're going to put the lid on in a minute. But that's our Carabina Versicolor, aka Antilles Picto. Stunning spider, the only Avic I've got. Awesome girl. Definitely a, another one. I'm glad I took the punt on and purchased. Stunning coloration. If you've seen an Avic, you'll know exactly what they're like coloured up. Highly recommend picking one up. They're not cheap as well for a female. This one cost me 145 British pounds, but she's stunning. Highly recommend getting an Avic and a, another genus that I need to get more of in the future more Avics. No food bulbuses in this one, just top up the water. This is our second scorpion, hence why it looks like sand. This is our desert hairy scorpion. Check the cactuses. The cactuses are looking good. Yep, they are real life cactus. This one is hid somewhere in there, but there's no food bulbuses. Just a little top up of the water. And that is it for our Desert Hairy, a scorpion. You don't want to try and pick up one of the nastier scorpions.
compared to my other scorpion. Definitely do not recommend picking up the Desert Hairy. The last tarantula in this tarantula maintenance video, the biggest tarantula in the collection. You will not find a Foo Bulbous at all from this girl. She is Lassiodora Parahybona Pink Salmon Bird Eater. So just top up the water dish. And that will be it for this girl. She's currently inside her bark. And we'll leave it at that. You won't see this girl. She's, sometimes she's out and about and sometimes she's in a bark. But she's in a bark. The, the leaves and the pine cones are my daughter. Every time we go through the park or she goes through the park, my daughter likes to pick me up a leaves and pine cones to stick in here. Like I said, the biggest tarantula in the collection by far. Not fully grown yet, but you've seen Pinky before. Obviously the angel, there's a story behind that. I've actually done a video on the channel where I built this enclosure and obviously explaining the story of the angel. But a recap for anybody who don't know the story of the angel and why I actually called this enclosure the angel garden is that angel was actually on my brother's grave and my mum gave me it and said can i make use of it so i decided to put it in here obviously and the angel is pinky's guardian and it keeps watching over her and i thought it was something cool you know an ornament from my brother's um headstone and rather than putting it in the bin make good use of it and build this enclosure around it um so if you're not seeing the video and you are new to the channel i have done a step by step where i actually built the garden of angel enclosure for pinky and this is the biggest exotero square tank you can get and she will literally live her life in this enclosure until she passes but obviously like i said she's not fully grown yet and no doubt I'll end up having more pine cones and dried leaves in here for my daughter, which I don't mind. And there's plenty of room in the enclosure. And to be fair, I think my daughter just like, likes it. Um, collecting pine cones and leaves for it. My daughter is actually getting into spiders, and this is one spider that she loves. And that is it for this tarantula maintenance video. I hope we enjoyed it. We saw a couple of spiders out. Um, not that many food bulbuses, and obviously... Quite a lot needed water. And obviously we saw a couple of spiders actually in the water dish waiting for water. So obviously that goes to prove one thing. Empty water dishes and spiders sat in the water dishes. That spiders do drink water. But I hope you enjoyed this arachnator. Obviously the next tarantula video. No, sorry. I hope you enjoyed the tarantula maintenance. The next tarantula videos. Um... In the works is um, obviously the tarantula rehousing and the um, arachnator for March. So keep a keep a look out um, the next two weeks, and there'll be two more pretty cool tarantula videos, and obviously the rehousing, which I'm still debating whether to rehouse the M Balfouri. Or a, another one or the Lagardi. So let me know in the comments which tarantula you want to see me rehouse into that empty Komodo. The M. Balfouri. Or would you like to see what the, the Lagardi looks like and we give that a rehouse. But as always, hope you enjoyed. The saltwater aquarium is doing well. All the animals are doing well. And this is the most fun I have. Um, when I'm adding stuff to the salt water tank or buying new tarantulas I've been making videos for over three years now over 500 videos 
and the channel is really growing well. So I want to thank each and everybody um, and hopefully the channel gets bigger. It'd be awesome if you could drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe so we can really grow the channel. And like I said, a massive thank you to all the OGs and all the new subscribers. It is the most fun I have filming all the animal videos. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, comment and bye for now.